What is going on, everyone, and welcome back to another new Comic Book Day Top 10 list. Today, I'm going to be ranking and reviewing all the books that I picked up for February 22nd, 2023's new Comic Book Day. What a new Comic Book Day we had this week. We had a ton of bangers come out. I'm so excited to talk about these books with you guys. Now, I did miss out on Plush, Batman One Bad Day, Inferno Girl Red, and it seems as though I still didn't read Junkyard Joe number four, but I did grab number five, so we can talk about that in tomorrow's live stream. In today's video, I'm going to be going over books from Marvel, DC, Boom Studios, Image comics and AWA upshot now as always as I begin to talk about these books just be aware that there are definitely going to be spoilers once I get a little bit more in depth with them but I do put a spoiler tag down below in the corner to give you a heads up that the spoilers about to happen so be on the lookout for that and now without further ado everyone let's talk some comics all right, everyone. Now, before I get into this week's top 10 list, I'm going to be going over the three books that did not crack the list. They're in no particular order. And the first one that I'm going to be going over today is Boom Studios Specs, issue number four. This is cover A. And for those of you interested in the series, this is the final issue. And I'll tell you what, I thought this was a complete letdown. Issues one through three all cracked either the number one or I think the number two spot. Phenomenal reads. This one, it just didn't do it for me. So we've got Kenny and Ted, and they're still trying to figure out how to destroy these glasses and what they should pretty much do next. They don't have much time because if you can recall Ted is still wanted and the cops are closing in on them the issue does some time jumps showing the aftermath of what happens with Ted and then eventually what happens to them in the future as well this pains me to say this because I love the first three issues. I think the concept is so unique and it's just such a fantastic read between the artwork and the story and the character developments. But this fourth issue just felt so rushed and everything that was being built up just fell flat to me. We can talk about this one more down below, but honestly, it's almost as if this fourth issue ruined the entire series for me. But the next one I'm going to be talking about is Marvel's Thor, issue number 31. This is cover A. This is another series that I've been very back and forth on, but I'm excited to see what the new writer can do with it. This is the start of a brand new arc, and I don't know. Just like the rest of the series, I'm kind of up in the air with it. So right at the start of the issue, Thor becomes face-to-face -face with a much older version of his baby sister, Lhasa. And she mentions that he needs to check on his dead. This is the indicator of where the arc is going to be going. Valhalla and Hell are both empty, and the dead are nowhere to be found. This issue is Thor, Jane Foster, and Odin, he's still trapped in Molnir, trying to figure out what happened, and they travel to Hell to find their answers. Doctor Doom does pop in at the end, and it seems as though he may have been playing some role in all of the dead missing. Now, with all that being said, the artwork is still phenomenal. Nick Klein is doing a terrific job on it. Now, as far as the actual story goes, I'm excited to see what Dr. Doom's role in all of this is. It's cool to see him make an appearance, and I hope they kind of do something big with him. But at that same rate, we're 31 issues deep. I feel like at this point, I'm just kind of riding this series out to the very end. That first arc, I am still riding off the high from that first arc. I loved everything about it. The stuff with Donald Blake was pretty solid, too, but outside of that... The series is honestly pretty forgettable. I'm not a big fan of most of it. Now, for this final issue that did not make this week's top 10 list, we've got Images, Undiscovered Country, issue number 23. This is cover A. You guys already know I always hype this series up. I absolutely love it, but we're still wrapping up the history zone. And to me, it's just not doing it. Now, there's a lot going on in this issue. The entire arc has still been the history zone, and for the most part, it's been all over the place. All of our main characters are in different time periods, and this issue, like the other ones, had everyone all over the place. Janet and Chang are doing everything in their power to not let the cure of the Sky Virus make it out. Charlotte and Val are hopping through different realities after they were killed, and then Ace is still trying to get revenge for his supposed dead friends. We still didn't really get any answers in this issue either, but we've still got one more morph to wrap up this arc. Now, as much as I hype this series up and as big of a fan that I am of this series, no doubt in my mind, this history zone is my least favorite arc of all of it so far. All of the other zones I thought were really cool. They served their purpose, some obviously better than others, so I know we've got to have some stinkers here and there, but this one, I don't know. I don't like the different time hops. I don't like all the characters are in different realities. We've got everyone scattered so far and there's still no answers. There's one issue left of this arc. We've got characters that are in the past, present, and future. And we've got different ones still hopping around. Some characters are older in the future, but they're still alive, younger in the past. Just not doing it for me. But now, let's jump into the real top 10 list. And here we go, everyone. Kicking this list off first, we've got coming in at number 10. This is Marvel's Strange Academy Finals, issue number four. This is cover A. You guys already know I absolutely love Strange Academy. I've been hyping this series up since pretty much day one. This is easily my favorite ongoing series from Marvel, and I highly recommend it. I'm still a little thrown off why they decide to restart the series at number one and change the name to Strange Academy Finals, when in reality it has the same writer and artist on it, and it's just a continuation off the first volume. It is what it is. Marvel's got to get some new readers in to an already kind of long series. But now as far as this issue goes, 
I mean, they didn't really do much with it for the plot. Now, as I was saying, this issue does have a few different plot points going on in this one. We begin our story with Shay Lee. She's running around town and she's literally late to everything. They don't really do much with this. And to be honest, this part of the story kind of fell out of place in my opinion. But other than that, we've got the Academy, literally everybody. And they're gearing up to protect the town and its people against a massive storm that's on its way. While all of this is happening, we still have Emily Bright and she's gearing up for this big war that's coming. She's gathering up an army and on top of that, she's recruited Doyle's dad Dormammu for the big fight. Even Irik had enough in this issue and realized that he screwed up by abandoning the academy and siding with Emily and all of her followers. She is extremely powerful and has influence over a lot of people and Dormammu knows it. While this wasn't a bad issue by any means, to me it just felt more like a filler. Nothing really happened in it that we didn't already know. Emily is still just gearing up for this big battle and she's recruiting different people. The only significant thing that happened was Irik coming to his senses and just kind of abandoning Emily. Just my thoughts though, let's talk about it more down below and for those reasons we've got coming in at number 10 we've got marvel's strange academy finals issue number four Next at number nine, we've got Dark Horse's brand new one, Blue Book, issue number one. This is cover A. I was so excited for this one, but this was probably my biggest letdown issue of the week. It's James Tynion on it. We've got aliens. What more could you really want? So we've got our main characters, Betty and Marty Hill, and they're just your average couple. They work normal jobs, and they were looking to go up to Montreal for vacation. As they're leaving their home state of New Hampshire, something begins to follow them. Betty notices it first, but Barney thinks it's literally anything other than a UFO. It keeps getting closer, and closer to the couple and they finally realize that they're in some sort of danger. This first issue wasn't horrible or anything, but I was just so excited for it and no doubt in my mind this was my biggest letdown of New Comic Book Day. I love James Tynion the Fourth and all the stuff that he writes. I love alien stuff, so together it should just be perfect. Especially from Department of Truth, that one alien issue that he wrote. That was probably my favorite issue of the entire Department of Truth series so far. But this first issue, there was nothing unique about it. There was nothing special about it. I feel like I've read this a hundred times. I've seen so many movies about this. Nothing stood out from the other stuff that I've read it before and what I've seen. So I'll continue on with the series probably for another issue or two just to see where it goes. But as of now, I mean, like I said, if you've seen or read anything with Aliens, this is pretty much on par with all of that. And for those reasons, we've got coming in at number nine. This is Dark Horse's new one, Blue Book, issue number one. Now we've got coming in at number eight, this is Marvel's Deadpool, issue number four, this is cover A. I've been a huge fan of this series, I think Alyssa Wong and her whole team are doing a great job on so far. I really like the artwork, I think the storytelling is great, I think she's done a phenomenal job capturing Deadpool's personality. I will admit they haven't done a whole hell of a lot with the plot so far, but the action has been on point. So Deadpool and Valentine are still at the zoo on their little date, but the Harrower and Doc Ock came to ruin their fun. This issue was straight up action pretty much just like the other ones, the Harrower still wants the symbiote grown inside of Deadpool, Doc Ock wants a piece of that too, and Valentine still got her ulterior motives. But on top of that, Lady Deathstrike showed up too because she still wants to get in with the Adelier. So as you can imagine, there is a lot of chaos going on. There is a ton of fighting and just all that crazy stuff. It was a fun, action-packed issue that left us on a big cliffhanger. As I was saying before, they haven't really done much with the plot. They're still running off the same thing that's been going on since the very beginning of the story. Everything we found out in that first issue is still happening right now. They have added some stuff here and there and like I said the big cliffhanger we got left on I'm excited to see what they do with it but on top of that like I said it's just a very fun series Alyssa Wong's done a great job capturing Deadpool's personality I don't go into a Deadpool series expecting this super in-depth plot with a lot of crazy stuff going on I want action I want his little zingers that he spits out all the time and that's exactly what she's doing definitely check this series out if you had a little bit of a light week or you just want to start a brand new Marvel series for those reasons we've got it coming in at number eight this week Next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number seven. This is Images, Ice Cream Man, issue number 34. This is cover B. This is easily one of my favorite ongoing series from Marvel. I absolutely love it. I'm a huge fan of horror books. This is a horror anthology series. So if you don't really know anything about this series, you can pretty much pick up any single one of these issues and just enjoy it from there. Pretty much every single story is different. Every once in a while, they'll throw some little Easter eggs into it just to give the longtime fans something that they can recognize. But overall you definitely need to check this series out. With all that being said, this one wasn't your typical Ice Cream Man issue, and it read more like something from earlier in the series. We meet two Vagabonds in this one, Mac and Phil. They're going to be our main characters. They're living out their days traveling state to state by train cargo cars. They've got a strict set of rules that they follow, and everything seems good for them. They ask each other right at the beginning of the issue, what's the craziest thing that they have ever heard traveling? After exchanging their stories, they meet Vicious Vic, and that's when things go completely bad for them. They're breaking 
breaking their own rules by stealing and even resorting to shooting someone. Towards the end, they learn why he's called Vicious Vic. This wasn't a bad issue. Like I was saying, it really reminded me of something that's from earlier in the series because as the series evolved, it's turned into something so much more and went from this little horror story to just having meaning behind it. Once you're done reading it, a lot of these Ice Cream Man issues really make you think like, oh man, they really went there and that kind of hits close to home because every once in a while something happens with like a here's the moral of the story and it really relates to me so I can only imagine it relates to a lot of other people as well. This one didn't really do that. It was just kind of more of a horror story, and that doesn't make it bad. I just really enjoy what it's turned into. I think we've gotten spoiled with this series over the last, like, 20 issues. Definitely check the series out, though. It's no doubt in my mind one of the best ones from Image, if not the best one, especially if you're a horror fan. For those reasons, we've got it coming in at number 7 this week. Now we've got coming in at number 6. This is Marvel's Carnage, issue number 10. This is cover A. This series has really turned into something special. I am thoroughly enjoying it now. The way this story has started to where it's at now, they have really progressed these characters and the plot. I love the artwork on top of that, and there's just so much action in it. So Carnage is still at the forge in this one, and he's trying to get his new god weapon. The dwarf and Neely came to the realization that Carnage cannot have this weapon. If he does, everyone is completely screwed. They devised a plan and put it to action in this issue. Their plan was actually successful, and Carnage was trapped. But remember Detective John Shade? He's still after Carnage as well, but he might not be in as much control as he thinks he is. Carnage and Cassidy's bond is just too tight, and there was just enough power between them and Uru Dust floating around to release Carnage and create an all-new beast. This series has honestly been awesome. I am thoroughly enjoying it. Now, I will admit, though, once they kind of went off-world into different realms, I wasn't completely sold on this series. I loved the beginning of it. I thought the stuff that Rom V was doing was incredible. But then, once they started doing all that other stuff, I was a little unsure about it. But looking back on it now, it was all completely important for what Rom V is trying to do with the current arc of this story. I'm excited to see where they go with it. Now, I have talked to a lot of people who aren't really enjoying this series at all. Hey, there's something for everybody. Not something I like is going to be something that you like but i think this series is very well done artwork action it's got a little bit of everything definitely check it out and for those reasons we've got coming in at number six this week we've got marvel's carnage issue number 10 here we go folks we're down to the top five issues of the week so coming in at number five we've got awa's Year Zero, Volume Zero, Issue Number Five. This is cover A. And for those of you interested in reading this one, this is the final issue of the series. I love Year Zero. This is consistently a phenomenal read from AWA Upshot. Incredible storytelling, and plus it's a zombie series, so it's right up my alley. It all comes down to this, and the world is finally descending into chaos. They know that there is a deadly virus going around, and everyone is just trying to survive. We're still following our main cast of characters, and at this point, they're not only trying to survive from the zombies, but all also the public as well. It's crazy to see everything go downhill so fast, and it doesn't have the happy or positive ending that you might be expecting. No doubt in my mind, Year Zero is my favorite series from AWA. They've consistently killed it on this series. I mean, they've got three volumes now, and every single one of them have just been a chef's kiss in my opinion. The artwork, the storytelling, and just the character developments in all of them are all top notch. All these series are only five issues, and they still have just really developed these characters to the point where I feel attached to them. I want to see how they survive. I want to see them thrive. I need more than five issues for all of these volumes. If you're a fan of zombies, this is definitely one of my favorite zombie series that I've ever read. You need to check this one out. And for those reasons, we've got it coming in at number five this week. Next up at number four, we've got Images, Philadelphia, issue number 28. This is cover A, another must read from Image Comics. And if you're not interested in finding all the back issues, they do have a hardcover and definitely trade paperbacks out for it. So there's no reason you can't be reading this one. It's in Philadelphia. We've got not only vampires now, but we've got gods and demons and other angels and all these other monsters. There is so much stuff going on in this series and Ronnie Barnes is not messing up on anything. Abigail and George Washington just got eliminated and that leaves Thomas Jefferson left. This issue had a few different plots going on. Obviously, the big war in Philly is going on in the background, but we've also got a Nazi going into hell to approach a demon about starting their own war. It doesn't go the way that a Nazi wants it to, but the best part about this issue, in my opinion, is the other plot. We finally get a backstory on Jupiter. We've only seen him as just this big, massive brute. Like, he's so lethal and kills everything in his pathway, but it was awesome to see just the other side of him. This was another great issue to the Philadelphia series. Rodney Barnes and his entire creative team have done such a sensational job on this series. The characters, the plot, the artwork, the action, it is all top notch. And I can't recommend this series enough. There's a hardcover out like I was saying. There's a lot of trade paperbacks out. There's no reason you can't be reading this series. 
And if you're not reading Nita Hawes, you got to get on that one too. I think it's like 10, maybe 11 issues deep at this point, but they're finally going to be connecting the stories together. So you do not want to miss out on that. Check it out. For those reasons, we've got it coming in at number four. Now for this next one coming in at number three, I did have to read it digitally and DC fans be prepared for it. We've got DC's brand new one, Superman issue number one. This is cover A. This was a fantastic first issue. Now I told you guys to get prepared because I think this is honestly my first Superman comic that I've literally ever read in my entire life. I grew up with Marvel, I grew up with all those characters, and when I got back into comics years ago, I pretty much just picked up right where I left off with all the Marvel characters that I grew up loving. I'm slowly making my way into more DC books, but this one, if you don't read a lot of DC, you're looking into getting into Superman, this is a must pick up. This new series begins with a shot of Kent Farms before it jumps right into the action. Superman is soaring through the sky using his powers against Livewire. A real strong start to the series in my opinion. It tones down a little bit and we get to see Superman working at the Daily Planet. Jimmy Olsen makes an appearance as well and then we've got Lois Lane, she pops in too. They did a good job with character introductions, helping new readers before jumping straight into the plot. Lex Luthor, he's pretty much what the plot is going to be about, wants to prove that he is a changed man and turns LexCorp into SuperCorp. He's concerned for the future and wants to help Superman at all costs. This was a great first issue, and in my opinion, this was extremely new reader friendly. I think they did a great job with just some character introductions. They didn't really bring anything from the past into it, at least that I recognized. I jumped into it without reading any Superman, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The artwork was fantastic, and just the way that they kind of introduced everybody that led right into the plot, and it's a very interesting plot as well. We really had a lot of everything in this first issue. DC fans, Superman fans, I want to hear your opinions on it down below, and for those reasons, we got DC's brand new one superman issue number one coming in at number three ah so now for these next two they were a little hard to pick and choose who's getting number one and number two but we've got coming in at number two this week this is boom studios something is killing the children issue number 29 this is cover a you guys already know i love something is killing the children this is easily my favorite series from boom studios one of my favorites if not my favorite ongoing series amongst all the different publishers it's consistently incredible the artwork the storytelling the character developments all of the characters that get introduced you don't even know which ones are going to live and which ones are going to die. You need to get caught up on this one. It's just consistently such a fire read. So this issue pretty much picks up right where the last one left off and Cutter is still on the loose and Erica is just trying to figure out their next steps so they can not only take down the new monster but also Cutter and her people. This issue doesn't completely focus on just that though and takes a different direction that I was a big fan of. The story shifts to the House of Slaughter and we see Cecilia and the head of the house discussing what they're going to be doing about Cutter killing Gary. Turns out this is all part of the plan. While Gary's incident was sad and everyone's mourning it, now they know that one of them is going to be eliminated by the other. If Cutter dies, they can bring Erica back to the house, but if Erica dies, they can easily handle Cutter as well. Cecilia makes a decision that she's just going to handle things herself. There is just so much stuff going on in the story. We've got Erica, Cutter, the brand new monster, Gabby, her sister, that entire plot. But now on top of that, they've added this extra layer of depth to the story. We get to see the House of Slaughter's just reaction to everything and Cecilia and how she doesn't like where things are going to be going. She takes things into her own hands. I love this series. I can't wait to see how they bring it all together. Let's talk about it more down below. So we've got coming in at number two this week. This is Boom Studios. Something is killing the children. Issue number 29. This is it, everyone. My top read of the week. We've got coming in at number one. This is Boom Studios. Once upon a time at the end of the world. Issue number four. This is cover A. I cannot believe how much I love this series. They are doing such a great job on it. I'm thoroughly enjoying everything. Every time I pick up one of these issues, I'm very impressed by it. And even when I go into new comic book day now, this used to be a series where it's like, cool, it's coming out. But now I'm looking at it like, yes, Once Upon a Time at the End of the World is coming out this week and I'm so pumped for it. In this one, the Rangers have officially caught up to Mezzi and Maceo and things aren't looking so good for Maceo. They took him hostage and decided to torture him, hoping that Messi would come back to save him. Things don't go exactly according to plan and she went off on her own, abandoning Maceo. The best part about this issue, in my opinion, was that we finally got to see the story of the Rangers, Mezzi's time there and what led her to eventually leave. It really gave us an insight to Mezzi and her character. She eventually did realize that she needs to go back and save Maceo, and I cannot wait to see what they do with it.
I absolutely love this series. It is so much better than I thought it was going to be, and I feel as though every single issue is just getting better and better as it goes on. Maceo and Mezzi's relationship is growing. We finally got a backstory on her time with the Rangers, and so much fun stuff is going on because there's a ton of great action as well. The Rangers, they went from this kind of Boy Scout group to just being these psychopaths. Check this series out. It's been top-notch from start to finish so far. And for those reasons, we absolutely have taken the crown this week. Coming in at number one, we've got Boom Studios, Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, issue number four. That is a wrap on this week's top 10 list of books, folks. That was a hell of a new comic book day. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you guys had a great one as well. Be sure to comment down below which books you picked up. What was your top read of the week? Which ones do you think I missed out on? And thank you for watching, everyone. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on. You won't regret it. Now, I've got two more sitting off to the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Hey there, Dynamite fans. Come join us here at The Experience this Wednesday, March 1st at 6 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, that's our usual time. Um, of course, we're going to have all your favorite books, whether it's Marvel, DC, Dynamite, CGC, CCAs, whatever. And I think it's Rex, John, AR. Hopefully, John will be with us. You know Nick is. I'll come if I feel like it. Anyway, I'm sure it's going to be a good time. So remember, it's March 1st. It's a Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, only on The Experience. See you then.